Understanding the Real Costs of Research A Focus on Facilities and Administrative Costs To advance our nation's economy, security, and health after World War II, the federal government decided to partner with colleges and universities across the country to conduct research on behalf of the government. Central to this partnership is federal grant funding. In 2017, the federal government invested over $40 billion to support research conducted by U.S. colleges and universities on behalf of federal agencies, including the National Institutes of Health, NASA, the National Science Foundation, and the U.S. Departments of Defense, Energy, and Agriculture. This funding comes in two forms. The first is direct funding. Direct funding pays for scientists, students, and other research personnel's salaries, supplies, and equipment, and other costs associated with conducting and sharing research. To conduct their research, however, scientists need other institutional research infrastructure and support services normally not allowed to be paid directly to them as part of a government grant. These equally essential institutional expenses for research are reimbursed to each university in the form of facilities and administrative costs. These are research operating costs, also called F&A or indirect costs. This funding helps pay for the costs of laboratories and other research-specific facilities provided by the Institution for the Conduct of Federally Funded Research, such as imaging and specialized labs. It includes support for maintenance and security for research facilities, as well as utilities such as electricity, water, air conditioning, and heating for research spaces, and IT to support and meet computing needs. F&A funds also help pay for the staff needed to ensure compliance with government regulations, such as the environmental health and safety requirements that protect researchers, staff, students, and patients. These F&A costs are an essential part of the price of doing research. And the federal government covers all these costs, right? Wrong. Federal data show that in fiscal year 2017, Colleges and universities contributed approximately $18 billion of their own institutional funds to support research on the top of the research funding provided by the federal government. This includes over $5.2 billion for F&A costs that the federal government did not reimburse. This means that universities end up making a significant contribution to supplementing the required cost of conducting federal research. In fact, unlike other research performers that are fully reimbursed for these costs, universities are strictly limited in the amount they can recover from the federal government to pay for administrative and compliance costs associated with the government research they conduct. This is due, in part, to an exacting F&A cost rate negotiation process with the government that requires institutions to identify and defend costs associated with federally sponsored research eligible for reimbursement. Existing government-imposed reimbursement caps on certain types of research grants and on administrative costs further erode institutions' F&A cost reimbursement rates. Although the F&A cost reimbursement process is complex and not always easy to understand, it is efficient and based on actual research costs. Moreover, it has allowed the decades-long partnership between universities and the federal government to work. That partnership has been central to the country's national security, economic growth, technical innovation, and medical advances. Despite the long-standing success of this partnership, some in Washington want to significantly reduce the federal government's role in funding F&A cost reimbursement. Further efforts to reduce or cap F&A cost reimbursement would directly hurt faculty and trainees and significantly harm institutions' ability to advance important discoveries. Cuts to federal F&A funding would impact many institutions' ability to maintain large specialized equipment that is shared among researchers, provide the compliance personnel who ensure all safety for faculty, trainees, staff, and patients, purchase and maintain IT for computing needs, maintain existing research space in buildings, including janitorial services and security services, and plan for and construct new buildings with the cutting-edge facilities needed to conduct the latest research. The bottom line is that any proposal to cut the federal government's contributions to F&A cost reimbursement is a proposal to cut research.
This would have a disastrous impact on research institutions' ability to foster technological innovation, improve public health and well-being, sustain a dynamic American economy, and help protect our national security. Instead of cuts, we should be talking about ways to strengthen the government-university research partnership so it can thrive in the years ahead.